Bramall Lane like your first season in the Premier League. Once once it's going, honestly, I haven't played in a better atmosphere in a, oh. in a football stadium ever. If we had three more games, we'd have gone up that year. I have no doubt about it whatsoever. Even over relegations I've had and things like that, that was my, that's probably the biggest disappointment in my career, not to get to that FA Cup final. It was probably the return leg at Fulham, which made me think, yeah, this is this is like my team. Like I, I I love this. Like there's not many teams in League One. You go down to Fulham away on FA Cup third round on a Tuesday night, and there's five five thousand fans. Not that that doesn't happen at a normal football club. This is the Chef United Way podcast with In Good Nick and Hal Stewart. We'd now like to welcome a defender who initially joined the Blades on loan in 2014. His stunning performances earned him a permanent move in January 2015. That's right, he's not just any fullback, he's John Brayford. Welcome to the Chef United Way. How are you doing, John, a.k.a. The Beard? How are you doing, guys? Yeah, all good here. You? Excellent. That's a very bright room you're in, John. Did you need to put all those lights on? <laughs> Just did you feel already? <laughs> 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 oh, it's great! It's great to have you on. We've just said before we we came on that we're massive, massive fans of you, and um, and we're just going to prove to you how how much fans we are of you, especially me, uh, because you are the only player that I've ever had a mask of. <laughs> so Jesus, that was me. Don't, don't remind me of those things. Jesus <laughs> <Christ. laughs> did, how did you see a lot of them in the crowd back then? Yeah, well, I remember them coming out and people used to have to, to ask and I was like, yeah, yeah, I have seen them sort of thing, but a tad embarrassed, not not in that sort of sense, but it's like a bit creepy, really. It Nick, is a little if, bit. You're not if, wrong, I'd known, you're not if I'd known you were going to get that mask out, I've got my Chris yeah. Porter one upstairs. Uh, I didn't yeah, even I'm know they were Chris Porter ones. Yeah, it was <laughs> Brayford or Porter. It was like, take your pick. And uh, I thought, I'll let, I'll let my brother-in-law have Brayford and I'll go with Porter. Yeah, Big definitely. Wise choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to have you on anyway. That beard is looking spectacular. Yeah, well, it's it's grown lately. It wasn't this long a few weeks ago, sort of thing. It's only because I've been watching Vikings on Amazon. I was thinking, I fancy a, I fancy a bit of that, to be honest. Like, like so, it's just naturally come back with a bit of colour in. Let's say. Can I just <laughs> add that other streaming services are also available? <laughs> I think you've done it on purpose so that the Blades fans can see that glorious beard because we, we used to call you the beard back then, didn't we? Oh, that, that was like the thing back then, wasn't it? So I think, and that's, I used to have people coming up to me. And that, I actually, at one stage, I thought that was my actual name for a short time. So, but no, it was, it was just that it was never done in that sort of sense. It was just like, this is what I want to do, really, sort of thing. And, I remember Nigel Clough when I was younger, like when the, it was the, the team photograph, everybody had to be clean shaven. I was fighting like the inner man inside me to always grow a beard at some point. So that's that's how it came about. What did it, did it take you a while to grow the beard back in the day? Uh, yeah, I think it did actually. And then I don't know, you just give it a few months sort of thing, like the hair and stuff. And you just think, no, nah, I'm just going to roll with it this time. And if it comes, it, if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So, yeah, and then I was like, it was probably something due while I was at Cardiff, to be honest. Fair I'll tell enough. you, if people are thinking that the, the, the subjects are going to change, they're going to be disappointed. This is <laughs> We're aiming for an hour purely on beard talk. Is that what it is? There isn't much. I don't use anything on it or anything like that if you're going to ask me that next. But <laughs> That's not, exactly, not like, not a, that was exactly not like the question. Beard oils or anything question. like that. If I was going pure Viking, I was just going to keep it natural, as, as wiry as it is. Right, well, that was literally the next question. So uh, we've taken that away, Nick. I'll jump Move straight on. to the next one. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> genuinely, we'll forget about uh, Beard Chat now. But how was it growing up on the, on the mean streets of Shelton and Hanley then, Duck? Oh, wow, well, yeah, Stoke, my own town sort of thing. Shelton is a bit further down from me sort of thing. But I've had a few nights in Hanley in my time, to be honest. But yeah, it's, that was my own town. I was literally five minutes from the old Victoria ground, the old Stoke ground, really. So that was that was where I grew up, learned to play football, everything like that. And 
I, th- I think he's got a bit of a reputation these days, Stoke, and that's my own town, so I can say that. Then you take offence if anybody else says that, though. But mm-hmm. uh, no, I had, I agree with my family and things like that. It was, I don't know. You just you look back and you th- you you enjoy those times. I still my my mum and dad, my brother, every all my family is still in Stoke, so it's only me who's who's, who's moved further afield, really. But no, Stoke. I, Stoke's always in my heart, do you know what I mean? Whether that's yeah. a football club or as a place, really. It was the pl- place where I was born and yeah, I've, my, all my mates are still in Stoke at the same time. I lived there for three years and I thought the people were what made it. I absolutely yeah. I loved Whereabouts it. were you? Well, I was in those two places. I lived in... Oh, uh, is that what it was? Is Shelter. that why? That, they that's the why I mentioned places, You know that. <laughs> no, I know, uh, just, I know Newcastle under Lyme and then I'm struggling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but well, New, Newcastle, I would say nice. Yeah, Newcastle's all right. Mm. I love the whole place. Yeah. Um, so talking about Stoke, we, does that mean you were a Stoke City fan growing up then? I was, yeah. I had a season ticket at Stoke. I remember doing one season, one of my friends, from, who was one of my school friends, we did every home and away game for one season. And I can't remember what season it was, but yeah, my dad... My dad used to take me and my brother down the old Victoria ground and then obviously onto the Britannia Stadium. But yeah, Stoke was Stoke was my team really. And I know when sometimes you, you answer these notes in the programme, people go, Oh, you're a Stoke fan. Like everybody has a team when they were growing up and that that was that was like my heart and soul, Stoke City Football Club when I was younger. It's travelled home and away with them on on numerous occasions really it never got to the stage where they were in the premier league league, whereas they have been recently but it was more the league one sort of sort of standard sort of grounds really whereas you you have the good atmosphere with it and everything like that so was it ever a case in your career either early or at any point when you thought signing for stoke might be on the cards i always got rejected from stoke when i was younger Truthfully, I remember having one six-week trial there, and that that was that. There was never even a possibility of that. Wow. It was. I remember going to crew for a trial when I was really young. Then other than that, I just I was at Man City for most of my junior life, eleven to fifteen, and then it was back to back to the Sunday mornings and Saturday afternoons playing with my mates and things like that. And it just just by chance went from there. Wow. But I, I, I ain't gonna. It was some of the best times, like when you Saturdays and the Sundays, or especially if you shouldn't say I had a few beers. I was only sixteen at the time on a Saturday night, but getting up on a Sunday morning, you have a bit of a tear up with your mates on on the football field. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you just mentioned Manchester City there. Tell us about the start of your career with Manchester City, then Burton Albion, where you became the first graduate of the club's then revamped youth academy. Yeah, well, Man City was, that was like credit to my mum and dad, really. And I always think with these young lads now, a lot of a lot of the work and it goes down to the parents, really, for how they take these kids. Like my mum and dad were, were taking me up to Manchester three times a week, really, which wasn't the easiest because my dad's a butcher and he'd be up at four till four, till four and then get in the car and we'd drive up to Platte Lane and in Moss Side and then that you do it as as parents really and especially with families now with with other things that are going on it, it's not easy so i'll always appreciate that and what my my parents did but uh yeah and it got to 15 and they didn't think my size was was big enough in a sense and that that was that really and it's quite crushing for any young lad when that's what you think you're dream is and you think you're going to make it because you're in an academy whereas that's not always the harsh reality of football really there's people fall by the wayside and I was one and then I just went back to just playing football for the enjoyment in a sense with my mates and then I got a phone call from I played in a like a Sunday Cup final at Vale Park which was like the the local final in Stoke-on-Trent really and Darren Wassell asked me if I wanted, they were starting a, an academy sort of scholarship with Burton College at Burton Albion. I'll be honest, I didn't really 
heard of Burton back then because they weren't in the places where they've been since, really. Mm. It was, yeah, I'm going to do my college work. I was probably going to go to college anyway or work in my dad's shop. So it was an opportunity. And then it was, okay, let's go, let's go for it. And it was leaving Stoke Station, 17 minutes past seven, the train was, to Tutbury and Hatton. And Darren Wassell used to pick me up from Tutbury and Hatton Station eight o'clock get to train in an hour before because that was the only train i could get train every single day while doing the college work and it rolled from there after about six 12 months whereas i was i was forcing my way into the first team then brilliant so uh so how did it go at burton then obviously we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about burton before we go on to crew but we're, we're going to be honest we are going to kind of uh go quite quickly to get to the chef united stuff the, the, <laughs> the key stuff for the channel yeah. um, so uh how did the move come about uh for crew was it was it just purely playing really well for burton yeah if we keep it simple that was just playing well then they sold me yeah <laughs> fair enough <laughs> that, is, that is simple he wants to get yeah. straight to the chef united stuff that's what it is that's what you can't wait yeah. for it uh it's so a cr crew 2008 uh not a great season for the club but personally for you was it a was it a good one uh in a sense really and it's making like my football league debut and all things like that and it was quite a tricky environment really moving from we were only training three days a week at burton when we first went so going into like a professional team i didn't really settle the first month or so and then i got my opportunity i think it was scunthorpe away and yeah it just i think i won players player of the year that year sort of thing and it was head down, just carry on. Like, as usual, I know we got relegated and I, I saw it and it, listen, it's getting relegated, don't get me wrong, but it was like, I've got a chance here sort of thing. And I was just trying to perform the best as I could. That was all. I just to yeah. say that the way you said, I think I won player of the year. I like that. <laughs> Very humble thing to say, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but, well, that, yeah. But then, what would become a familiar story? Nigel Clough reunited this time with Derby County. So, wait a second. Much... Did did John Braithwaite play for Nigel Clough once? I know, right? Uh, <laughs> but how much did you enjoy the Derby County time of your career, John? Oh, that that was up there, especially at the time. Like it was. Even you guys have got to admit it's a big football club, so it was oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's phenomenal and then going going from burton to crew was a big leap but going from crew to derby was a huge leap especially my debut on the first game of the season was leads away as well which was well what have i stepped into here sort of thing like but i absolutely relished every single moment of it do you know what i mean that was like i i, I love this do you know what i mean it was like a gladiatorial like experience in a sense and yeah let, let's have it do you know what i mean and I have like really fond memories of Derby. I, I did well the first year sort of thing. And I don't even have that many bad memories of Derby County whatsoever. I, I enjoyed every single moment of it, really, playing for that football club. Mm. Um, how influential would you say that Nigel Club was in your career? Oh, it's been huge in my career. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be sat here talking to you guys now, truthfully. Yeah, true. That's that's the be all and end all of it at the end of the day. Somebody has to give you a chance at 16, 17. If you don't get that chance, then you don't get a chance to, to live the life you want to you want to live. I am grateful, but then I also I've repaid some of that faith he put in me back back as well, in a sense. Well, let's talk about another manager who's now really under the microscope in the Premier League because you went to Cardiff City they were then in the Premier League and I just wondered what your memories were of working under then manager Oli Gunnar Solskjaer uh yeah Oli came in really and that's how um that the Sheffield United thing come about I don't played the first six months under Malky sort of thing we didn't I don't know like Malky had chased me from the January which I knew about and the deal got done in the summer Everything was okay. And I, I must admit, on my side, it wasn't all Malky not liking me and things like that. Like, I didn't really settle in Cardiff that well. It was, well, this is this is crazy, really. Like, the personnel we've got in here and 
it was a bit clicky really and we had some great lads as well some are, some are still stay in touch with but i didn't settle and ollie came in and uh i remember having a conversation with ollie really i was he'd seen me in training and i was going to play in bolton uh in the fa cup sort of thing he's told me i was going to play sort of but uh nigel had been on the phone about taking me on loan at Sheffield United for the remainder of the season and this choice was up to me whether I wanted to play my first game for Cardiff away at Bolton in the FA Cup or play at home to Fulham in the FA Cup for Sheffield United and he sent me a message saying I, I sent one back saying well I, I, I want to go to be honest I understand uh, I said I just need to get out of here whether it's till the end of the season and we start afresh whatsoever and then I had a, a text message from him and Ken Chu about, well, if you want to go, then these are the terms you're going to have to go. It was like, I don't think they expected me to say yes because the terms were like less than 50% of my money, really. So I just said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And then they had no choice then to go back on their word, really. And then I got got up to, to Sheffield and we played uh, full of at home and in the FA Cup, which we drew. Ollie was, Ollie was great to me. And even during my... Uh, loan spell like when he was still the manager at Cardiff and stuff he kept in touch with me and things and that that summer he was like saying you're going to be my first choice right back and all things like that but my damage had been a little bit done in Cardiff in a sense by then and now, then obviously I had my time in Sheffield and my mind was pretty made up he could have he could have promised me the moon in a sense I remember it like it was yesterday though not the yeah. not the necessarily the score line but your performance, you won that crowd over in that yeah. game straight away. We just saw that determination and just yeah. how good you were, really, because uh, we'd not seen a, a right back as good as you for, for quite a while, in my opinion. Uh, what About that Fulham game, though, um, what do you remember from that day? Because obviously, if the fans made an impression on you and you obviously yeah. made an impression on us, what did you yeah. go away from the ground thinking at that point? No, I hadn't played football for six months until that game as well, which I, I was like, I just enjoyed it. Like it was, it was just a bit of me, if that makes sense. You know what I mean, it was it wasn't one of these new modern stadiums and just the people and the noise from the stadium and everything. And it was a, to be honest, it was a chance just to play football, which I first saw it as to go out and I'd been playing in the championship the year before and got my move to the Premier League, whether it was League One or not, do you know what I mean? It was a chance to go and play football at any level, which I, I remember, I actually remember walking out on the pitch and I was thinking like, I'm just, oh, I'm going to have it today. Do you know, knowing you just, <laughs> you want to put everything out on the pitch. And that, that was, that's what I wanted to do. Whether it came across to other people like that, like you say, then that great sort of thing. It was it was probably the return leg at Fulham, which made me think, yeah, this is this is like my team. Like I I, I love this. Like there's not many teams in League One. You go down to Fulham away on FA Cup third round on a Tuesday night, and there's five five thousand fans. Not that that doesn't happen at a normal football club. That's that's just great to hear, isn't it, Hal? I can see from the smile on your face that you're loving every second. Of well, that. The, the, the funny <laughs> thing is, like, my, my brother and my dad went down to Fulham as well on the Tuesday night, and obviously, and, and one of their friends as well, like, and um, anyway, they had they'd had a few beers in the day and stuff like that, and obviously, Sean scored the winner at the at the end, sort of thing, and uh, Miller time. Yeah, and it was about like. I don't know, it was like the Wednesday after or something like that, like the Wednesday night on, I've got a phone call off my mum and my mum's like, have you heard off your dad? I was like, no, is he, is he back at home? No. So I phoned my dad, like obviously in answering the phone to my mum because him, him, and, him and my brother are still in London celebrating the win. So they didn't come back till the Thursday then. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Brilliant. <laughs> so, but it's, it's like, um, and I've watched them back, like you can watch all the highlights of these games, like it's when you watch um, somebody filming it from the, from the mm. the away end which gives you goosebumps in a sense that that game was probably even now probably one of the best games not personally what i played sort of thing but that was yeah that that's what 
made me think with Sheffield United, like, wow, this is something special in a sense. Would you would you say that it made you kind of fall back in love with football? Because it uh, sounds it sounded like you, you had a bit of a tough time before that. I wouldn't say fall back in love. It was probably it was just the monotonous or like the routine it, it, it cardiff sort of thing whereas i'd never seen football like that in a sense yet i mean or not even the pressure because i'd like to think i can deal with pressure i wouldn't want to see myself as that it was just uh, it was just a connection between people really whereas i know majority of the fans enjoyed me playing for the club and i i love playing for the football club it was just it just worked really yeah it really the, did the funny thing about that season as well it mm. ended so brilliantly oh when no. it started that start to the season i don't care about what you say about the season that was the worst start to a season we've ever had yeah. and you coming in on loan and leaving everything out on the pitch like you've just yeah, said did we, did, did we finish like seventh or something as well that season yeah, we were. I think we were about six points off promotion. Uh, sorry, off, yeah. uh, off playoffs. the playoffs. I think. But, I think that's what we always said. Like, and if we had three more games, we'd have gone up that year. I have no yeah. doubt about it whatsoever. I, no I, remember, doubt. I remember me and my dad going to literally like every away game in the back end of that season, and we were going there knowing that we were going to score at least three or four goals. And we were going to win by at least three or four goals. Yeah. That's how I mean, confident that, that, we were. That, that's the same. It was probably like like the confidence and stuff, or, or on the opposite side, like when the confidence is low, like and you don't feel like you're going to win week in, week out. I remember turning up on a Saturday, like around my lane, it was like, yeah, we, we are going to win. Like it wasn't even a question in your mind, like we, we were going to win a football match. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And everybody was behind you. It was like, we're, we're playing 20 against 11 here. Do you know what I mean? It was. It actually felt like that, truthfully. It did. It did for us. So that's the third stint with Nigel Clough. You, you've clearly made your impression by then. You joined Sheffield United on loan. I think we all know the answer to this. But aside from that Fulham away Miller time winner, yeah. What What was the highlight during that loan spell with United? Like the the, the cup run was amazing. Do you know what I mean? Like the cup run was something really really special but also the end of it was like probably the biggest disappointment in my whole career to be honest with you wow even to this even to this day because i remember it was straight away i just remember like we played charlton that day i'd gone home got changed i think that there was a game the, the other game was on after us sort of thing and um uh, gone for a few beers sort of thing and i went down to the common room in sheffield watched the draw and when we we drew Hull, and it, it wasn't like oh we're going to Wembley. I I I thought like we've got a hell of a chance like to get to an FA Cup final straight away. I thought that, and the, the it, to get there was amazing. But the biggest disappointment is we we should have won that day. And regardless of how happy blades fans were of scoring three goals at Wembley or getting to an FA Cup semi-final we genuinely should have won that day and that's still that's the big even over relegations I've had and things like that that was my that's probably the biggest disappointment in my career not to get to that FA Cup final that just shows how much confidence you all had uh, in each other which is great to see and and us, like you just said, us just scoring three goals in that game and, and taking mm. the lead and then retaking the lead. We were yeah. going absolutely crazy. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it was just so good to see us score at Wembley because I'd ne we'd been to Wembley loads of times. I'd been to Cardiff. Mm. We'd never seen us – well, I'd never seen cool. us score a goal. So just the yeah. fact that we scored a goal and we were allowed to cheer yeah. at Wembley was just was just brilliant <laughs> for us. And that, that, that was – yeah, and I, I totally get that. But on the opposite side, like, that was like the slight disappointment. And it was like, for the first time, it was like – We've lost and people were happy, do you know what I mean? But on the opposite side, it was like, we had a big chance today, like, big, big chance to get to an FA Cup final as a League One football team. And then it's it's 50-50 in the final, do you know what I mean? Of course, yeah. 50-50, whether it was, I think it was Arsenal, it was it was 50-50. Well, we'd have been in we'd Europe, have... wouldn't we? Even if we'd lost. Is that what it was? 
Well, because Arsenal would have qualified anyway, wouldn't they, for their league position, I guess, or winning the FA Cup, I can't remember. But we would right. have because because of that. So, yeah, just by getting there, I think we would have got into Europe. I'm, I mean, pop in the comments if I'm wrong, but I, I think that's Yeah, good. good experience under Nigel them days, I, 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 I'll yeah. tell you that. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> amazing. Let's, let's just go back a few games because we had some incredible games in that cup run, like you said earlier. We obviously beat um, Forest, yeah. but then we beat Charlton. Obviously, if we'd have... Um, sorry, us beating Forest. We knew that we then had Wednesday in the next round. Yeah. If it wasn't for Wednesday losing to, to um, Charlton, so I remember sitting in a pub with one of my mates who was a Wednesday fan and actually wanting them to win because I knew, I knew that we were going to give them a right hiding. So you know, if John had scored that goal he scored against Charlton against the Pigs, you'd have a statue outside Bramall Lane now. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd still be here, to be honest. I'd still be on Callum <laughs> Island or something. <laughs> so. But so um, those two games, uh, what were the? Because uh, obviously you scored in one of them. Um, yeah. What were they like to play in? Oh, amazing, do you know what I mean? Because it was all around this, the city the week leading up to them games because we were doing so well in the league. It wasn't like I, I thought had been taken off the league. It was just a progression from one to the other and you just sensed it during the week. And I remember before the Charlton game, I got injured at MK Dons, which Nigel wasn't too happy with because I told him I was okay to play. And then I didn't train all that week leading up to the Charlton game. But the, the atmosphere in the Charlton game was even more so than when we played at Wembley, the atmosphere, the, the ground was physically shaking, really. I know you've, like you guys have played in the Premier League since, you've had some big clubs, but it, it was, I remember after the, and I'm, I know I'm going after the game, and we were all sat in the change room thinking, yeah, and everybody must have stayed behind and things like that, and the greasy chip body song come on, and you could just hear everybody and they said oh you're going to do a lap of honor people have stayed and it was like you could hear the noise from inside inside the the first team changing room which was like half an hour even after the final whistle had gone that's that's incredible to hear that um i've just got goosebumps thinking about that just just that moment because i remember how how rocking bramall lane was in that cup run it was yeah. so 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 good to watch yeah and uh, like, stay with the forest game as well and Port scoring that penalty and it's just just a sense of like relief it's hit the net do you know what I mean it was like yeah another one ticked off and just the momentum was like rolling for Sheffield and you guys know yourself as well like any any Sheffield United fan there's once Bramall Lane like your first season in the Premier League and once once it's going honestly I haven't played in a better atmosphere in a, oh. in a football stadium ever ever Clip that Clip yeah, I just say clip that. <laughs> I'm not just saying that. Need like no, no. We the believe, only yeah, one yeah. which would come, only one which would come close is probably like St James's Park or something. But the ball's been drawn into the net. As ever weird as that sounds, it's like it's been drawn into the net, and you get an extra five percent from that. And that's maybe, why I, I guess you you know when when the blades had the choice, you'd always want to shoot into the cop second half. Hundred percent, yeah. But that, that that was that was that's what I enjoyed doing, to be honest. You went back then, didn't you? I went back to Cardiff, yeah. You went back to Cardiff. I was just thinking because the next mm. season we expected us to be promoted, no problem, because of how good mm. we were at the yeah. back end of that season. And yeah. and like you said before, if we'd had a few more games, we would have easily got into the uh, into the playoffs, mm. and then we'd have walked them playoffs. No, no doubt about it. Did you yeah. expect United to get promoted the season after? Yeah, and it was, you don't want to make assumptions because it didn't happen. But like that season, like well, like we said earlier, sort of thing. Like if there was three more games, I, I don't have a doubt in my mind we would we we would have gone up that year. And then obviously I left, went back to Cardiff, played for the first six months, and then I re-signed in the January. And there's still expectation to get promoted and stuff. And obviously we got on got into the playoffs, and it wasn't meant to be really. John, Which it was a I think year. It, it was it, a year to the day that you signed permanently. Did you know that from when you signed on loan? Is that what it? I, I didn't know that. No, exactly a year. Right, I didn't know that. No, so uh, I, remember, I remember signing the forms. I think, I think played Preston away, and me and my dad went went up to with Jim Phipps and Mal Brannigan, and we signed the forms at Preston away and stayed and watched the game. That's where we actually signed the forms. 
Yeah, I was just going to mention Jim Phipps because he was uh, very uh, prevalent at that time at United, wasn't he? Yeah, you didn't really see loads of him about the place and stuff like that. And it isn't like I had f f frequent contact or anything with him sort of thing. It was just, it seemed that the important parts of, like, say, the deal and stuff, like, he was there, really. So I don't actually know what role he was playing at the club. I, I, I don't, but he was he was there, like, negotiate, the negotiating sort of part of it. And then he was also there when I signed it and things like that. Mm. Um, that season then, why do you think we we didn't kind of push on? Because uh, I said we still had the core players, really. Mm. Like, like you say, it's I don't know, there, there could be numerous factors and I, I honestly don't know. It's because the expectation was there from not just the fans, but us as players, really. Like I wasn't there for the first six, six months of the start of the season, but it wasn't like we were weren't in a position to to go and get promoted still even getting into the playoffs was like we're, we're playing swindon like we we can beat these if we play to our best we we will beat these and it wasn't we under undermine them by thinking like that it was just that that is if we play well we can we can perform to our standard we we should win obviously john we know you didn't play in the five all the infamous infamous match against uh swindon but of course Injury problems for you genuinely became a theme for that permanent move to Sheffield United. So, tell us about what actually happened during that uh, that first leg. Yeah, it was the first leg. One that I did my knee, so yeah, that was you didn't you didn't play in that one. It's it's a good thing, really. I had a, I had a fitness test though, even though I was out for nine months. I had a fitness test to try and play for, to get in the the team. Yeah. Wow. wow. So, well, I had done my I'd done my knee, and I I knew something wasn't right when the whack and things like that and I carried on till half time and I spoke to well I shouted over to the gaffer and I said like ah this is something not right here and he was like just give me till half time which was another five minutes or so gave it till half time got in and like Brownie assessed me it was the Matt Brown was the physio and I was like it just feels like it just feels a bit weird stiff anyway they strapped me up and everything to try to get me back out for the second half I was like yeah I should be fine the guy was like, yeah, okay, just see how, see how you are. I've, I've started walking down the tunnel and I, my knees just like, the strapping's come off because my knees just like blown up and I was like, no, I'm like really struggling here. I was like, I don't know what it is, but there's something not right. Anyway, we conceded the second half and obviously we got we got beat over over the night. I think it was to fin fin finish the 2-1 and take the first leg. And um, um, That's right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and... Um, Anyway, I got home that night. I just tried to do what I can with it. Anyway, the next morning, I couldn't get there's there too much swelling, so I didn't have a scan. But I was trying to do my exercises, try to go for a jog. Spoke to Brian. He said, "Well, I'll do. Let me try. Not run it off in a sense. You know what I mean, but because I didn't have anything to aim for, it's just like I just need to try get it going. So I'll do a bit of a fitness test for myself and." We'll see where we are. Came back and I was like, phone Brownie. I was like, I think it'll be okay. So I've gone for the scan and everything like that. And here he got the results back and he's like, no, nah, you've you've done quite a lot of damage, really. Like, stop doing whatever you're doing to get fit. So uh, we'll move on to talking about uh, who, who, are the, who are your friends at Sheffield United then in the dressing room? Uh, I, was, I was good mates with... To be fair, we were, we were a bit of a gang in, in that time, especially when I joined on loan and... We've got the like, like some of the lads have gone on to great things now. We were in that team, really. Do you know what I mean? But I was close to everybody, really. It wasn't like, oh, I'm not speaking. It didn't matter who you were sat next to. Do you know what I mean? There was a conversation. And I think that was, that's what Nigel tries to do in a sense, though, really, to be, bring a group rather than an individual. It's what he's always done at all the teams. He's, there's no room for egos in a sense. It's always, always been group mentality rather than an individual mentality but if you ask me to name like my closest friend at the time i can't really name you one like kutsi was a good mate of mine when he's at sheffield and stuff i know when he wasn't there at the time and but i was, I was close to murph like me and murph have stayed in touch obviously he came to burton for a bit and things like that and yeah it's, it was great playing at the back with harry when i played center half with him and we, we just had a a bit of a gang in a sense 
It, it's funny that she, she should bring that up about Harry Maguire because um, I always wondered why you got kind of pushed into central defence. Was there a reason for that? No, that's why I've always usually, well, I say I've always usually played where I've always wanted to play in a sense. Do you know what I mean? It's just obviously in the conference when I was 17, Nigel didn't think I was strong enough or had the physicality there. And so he moved me out to right back. And that's, that was probably the only real time I've ever really played fullback. Like when I first went to Burton, like I went there on trial as a centre back. And then when it was at Derby and crew, they both signed me as fullbacks in a sense. And you fill in and the odd time at centre off and you get the odd draw and you think, oh yeah, I might actually stay in my position. I want to play in now sort of thing. But uh, no, it's, it was, I, d I don't know what the like the misconception was. I know people enjoyed me playing at fullback because I'd, I'd usually like playing at centre half and fullback was just like, yeah, I've got freedom. I can do what I want down this wing now. Do you know what I mean? Without, if I lose the ball in the middle of the goal, it's going to cost the goal in a sense. Yeah. Well, quickly, uh, just touch on Nigel Atkins. What did you think of Nigel? Uh, like when he first came in, I just, it, do you know what I mean? He'd, he'd got a good repertoire and things like that, but looking back on it and now, I just, it wasn't the right fit for Sheffield United. That's my personal thing. I have nothing against Nigel, do you know what I mean? He's gone on to manage, he's at Charlton now, do you know what I mean? And he's a real genuine bloke. I just don't think it was the right fit. Like, I think like, like the Chris Wilder sort of type, night like, tracksuit heart on your sleeve sort of guy is what the fans want at Sheffield United and I don't think that came across what they wanted if that makes sense the the approach was too methodical really for for people like there's all good and well having all the tactics in the world but if your players don't take it on board or you don't let them run and have a battle then it's pointless in a sense and I think it was all it all just got a bit muddled up at that sort of time and the results didn't go your way and it'd be like instead of looking like at it in terms of well we didn't run hard enough we didn't work hard enough there was always a methodical approach of why this broke down i just don't think it i just don't think it clicked at a club for sheffield united because it's a way it's like a working man's town which i loved about it and i just don't think the fans to to nigel atkins and it in in that way if that makes sense that's how i wanted to play i have no problem with how all managers have different approaches you take it on board and you try implement it it's just when you're passing the ball around the back to keep possession for the sake of keeping possession it ain't going to last long at bramwell lane to be honest with you mm, yeah yeah completely completely um my my we'll move on from that because we don't want to remember that season at all we've <laughs> spoken to a few ex-players from that season to get their kind of uh input on it but we we wanted to talk to you more about the season before and the season before because we we really enjoyed those days i think the main reason why we enjoyed those days so much is because we'd had a few seasons of heartbreak before that but yeah. you, you guys obviously made us fall back in love with the, with the club obviously you yeah. Jamie Murphy Scoogle, even Ryan Flynn I absolutely yeah. loved Ryan Flynn wow well, Flynn is um, like Flynn, I, Flynn is one of the best players I've had playing front of me just for, for his sheer work rate do you know what I mean sometimes it went unnoticed and people just put they're the sort of cogs in your wheel you need them football teams at the end of the day you you, you need them sort of characters and Flynn if Flinny and to fill in for me, I wouldn't have been able to do half the stuff I, I could have done. Because if, if me and Flinny are both stood in the touchline down the far end of the pitch, in the place where I'm meant to be is wide open, you're going to concede more goals than you're going to score. We'll just kind of move on to the Chris Wilder kind of era because a lot of people probably forgot that you started the season under Chris Wilder because it didn't last last very long, did it? And, and Chris Wilder, he marked you as probably the best right back in the, in yeah. the league at that point. So why didn't it work out for you? I think it was just at the the start of the season we had, which was, you could have picked any number of players in that team, right? At that second ago, while well, he's crap, he's absolutely crap. He'd get rid of him, like, or whatever sort of thing. And we, I think, I can't remember, it might have been Rochdale or Shrewsbury we lost at home against, we were 3-0 down after yeah not very long whatsoever and then 
we had like a bit of a meeting me and like i went see chris and just say i i went i was gonna i went to go and see him to say look i can play center off if you need me to play center off because i didn't know if he he knew that or what i'm probably insulting his football knowledge he probably did he probably just didn't want me to play there mm-hmm. it was uh and then he had a conversation and, and he just said look john for the benefit of the football club like for the wages you're on which wasn't the number people have talked about in other walks of life to him. It wasn't nowhere near like the crazy money people have said or whatever. It was a wage for a League One football club with Sheffield United was, however big the football club, everybody has a budget, do you know what I mean? Whether it's Premier League, Championship, League One. And uh, Chris just said, Luke, you would do us a favour, like there's been a couple of uh, opportunities that have come up where to go out on loan and I'll be able to build a few more players. And I was like, okay, yeah, like we, I remember we were, I think we were playing Millwall on the Saturday and it was in that week we had that conversation. And I just said to him, are you sure? Like I said, I would stay about like, cause like, this, this is my football club. I didn't sign th- three years or so just to walk away in a sense, really. I know it's been a tough start. Chris was absolutely brilliant with me and people said, oh, you fell out and all that. And he was like, no, this will help the football club. And, still a part of my plans he's just going to help me for the for the time being and he said just have a think about it and get back to me i remember getting uh i remember tackling james wallace in training that day and it hurt in my knee again sort of thing and it wasn't like bad i, would, I said like i'm gonna i'd never drop out of training mm. and i dropped out it looked like i was like oh, I'm, I'm jacking it here but i explained to him i said look i will if it's going to help but then I'll go. I went to Burton. Kieran Freeman played at Millwall in a three-five-two, and the rest is history in a sense, really. John, but I've, I've, I've still kept in touch with Chris even to this day. I texted him, texted him the other day about wishing him the best of luck wherever he chooses the next day. There's, that's great. I have not one bad word to say about him. I think what he's done for Sheffield United Football Club is absolutely amazing, and I was sacrificed, but I don't see that as in like. A bad thing to where the football club has gone from from that moment i don't at all but john i, I just can't help thinking that if chris had known he was going to play the three five two that mm. you playing right side of center back the overlapping center back someone mm. who could defend as a center back and attack like a fullback you'd actually yeah. have been perfect for the system that we ended up implementing but chris didn't know that when he would have made that decision we hadn't worked on that at all until the mill all the way game sort of thing which was two days before but you didn't really have a bad replacement in chris basham to be honest though whether that was me or or chris basham do you know what i mean and bash was there when i was there he's a absolutely brilliant lad and i am so chuffed for him what he's gone on to achieve i really am it's like a slide it's also like Moment. people forget about kieran freeman and that that was in a position i could have played as well and i've I've been at most clubs of my career with Kez. It's just we've always battled for the same spot, really. <laughs> but Kez was let loose that season, and it was like the Red Arrows, really, when you used to watch him on the TV. And I always see Kieran just standing at the back post, just tapping one. I was thinking, oh, that could have been a, a goal of my bloody stats, do you know what I mean? But <laughs> nah, Kez is absolutely great, lad, and he, he deserved everything he got that year with all the plaudits and everything. Yeah, we absolutely love him. What, what about away from football? Because... Uh, I always imagined you, and it might, it might be wrong, it's just that you know, you're trying to imagine what players are really like. I always pictured you as someone who had interests away from football that were completely different to football. Yeah, I, I, like, a, I like a pop quiz. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I have, diff- I have other interests. I, I've got a couple of horses. I love horse racing, do you know what I mean? I have different things. Like I, I love cooking these days, which sounds so... <laughs> terrible don't it and like doesn't go with the style but i actually the game on a saturday night now now you can't go out for a couple of beers like i actually enjoy cooking and things like that but yeah i just a bit quieter life now than when i was living in sheffield really because i used to i i've always said i might even live back in the city one day because i i loved living up there it wasn't just the football club it was the city and the people around it i i I love going play at Bramall Lane on a Saturday, then going for a pint with my dad down Callum Island for a few hours. And do you know what I mean? Then I used to love going. I lived up in Ranmore, and I used to love going in the Rising Sun for a couple of beers. And yeah, it was 
that was it was and then you could go 10 minutes down the other way and you could be in the peak district which was like yeah this is a bit of me really i i absolutely loved the city loved it have you have you been back to Bramall lane since you've you've left never been back no you're definitely coming back one day though aren't you i would i, I would love to come back one day do you know what i mean i don't have i only have fond memories of the place people think it ended on a sour note which is completely false i even i even saw one of the guys in the star write something i was like no that's not true and you you thought well no that's not true so don't try to say things which aren't true and people believe things what they read like like we we see on tv every single day these days and things is i have nothing but admiration for the football club i really don't i mean nick and i have read something today in the papers that we fundamentally know is not true and a lot of blades <laughs> are talking about as truth and you're spot on john and hopefully mm. this this will help kind of dispel some of those bits. Uh, listen people believe what they want to believe at the end of the day i don't want to say i'm, I'm not bothered it sounds really poor to say oh i'm not bothered what people think i'm not I, I don't i don't want to come across like that it's just i have i have no agenda not to tell the truth do you know what I mean? mm. so you know, and it's like Sorry, do you, do you know what? I, I remember seeing a video clip of you leaving Sheffield United and it, it was anything but kind of uh, going out on a sour note. You were shaking hands with Chris Wilder and all the coaching staff and it looked very amicable. Yeah, it, it, it was it, it was something that needed to happen for the football club at the end of the day. It wasn't like, oh, well, you've got up to misdemeanors and i got up to a few misdemeanors in my time while i was in sheffield don't get me wrong but <laughs> it was this is what is happening with the football club and that's the real world at the end of the day like this will help this business so do you mind just doing this yeah not a problem not like kick up a fuss and it's the benefit of everybody for, for this to happen really and it's the instead of which i admire chris for at the time it was just a man's tour which which the He's the sort of guy which he is. Do you know what I mean? He is a top top follower, and what he's achieved for his boy old club is amazing. And what's happened re recently, I don't know the ins and outs. It's is ludicrous in my eyes, but it is what it is now. Well, you, you obviously moved back to Burton. Other than growing your hair and then shaving it all off, <laughs> um, what's what's how, what's life like at Burton? Yeah, it's it, it's great. Like obviously. The gaffer Jimmy's come in now, sort of thing. It was shame for Jake because, like, Jake is probably my closest friend and closest friend, not just in football. Like, he is one of my best best mates. You know what I mean? He is. He's a he's a bit of me, really. I don't know what a bit of me is, but he is a bit of me. Like, he's he's cut from the same cloth. And when he got the got the job, I was like over the moon because I know how hard he's worked. Should doing his badges, which. I find that kind of ludicrous too because it's you can have all the badges but no knowledge at the end of the day but jake had done both sides out of it and i knew what he wanted to achieve for the football club he just didn't work out and it's it's not easy when you've worked so hard for something for it to be taken away within such a short space of time and it was up to us as players and even me as captain to take full responsibility that jesus christ i've let my mate down big time here and uh that was a big memory from this season but life goes on in a sense and i've seen jake since then and he's he's okay do you know what i mean he obviously he's disappointed there's no point there's no hiding away from that but i don't think it will stop him in his career and then jimmy's come in and it's it's too cough really whereas we've won i think we won six or seven in a row and then we've we've drew and lost the last one or two but we've got us out got ourselves in a position where hopefully we can stay up now yeah jimmy being jimmy floyd hasselbank and jake uh, being jake buxton for those mm -hmm. that wouldn't be familiar uh i've got to say what do you want to do as you i'm sure have already thought about the next stage after football well you're thinking more than me because i don't know to be honest the world the world's a big place isn't it so it, it is why not huge. why not I, I i want to go see more of that to be honest we're we're a small island in a in a in a big world so i don't know yeah but that's that's, hmm. that's, that's incredible to hear from a from a footballer as well because a lot of footballers are quite close-minded but it's great you seem quite an adventurous sort of bloke have you been to a lot of countries then i enjoy traveling yeah i've i i do enjoy 
my summer time off yeah i think a few people know that and things like that but yeah i i think there's we're, we're we're a small dot here for a small amount of time i think that's why my mindset works and enjoy every single moment of it especially in these times now mm. but like it's it, we, we we can all get negative about things it's so easy to do that and listen we've got a life to live at the end of the day whether that's in football journalism a, a, anything you want to do why, why not in, enjoy it to the maximum we don't know when when the last day is before we uh, let you go and uh, this is not a leading question i promise uh where did you enjoy playing your football the most in your career you think i'm gonna be, be really biased here but no i'd like i'm gonna say sheffield united because of a hole if that makes sense and that i i love my time at derby love love playing for derby county and i've loved playing for every football club i've played at do you know what i mean but then you, you get a connection with a place and not just i know the sheffield wednesday and sheffield just as much as the sheffield united and there's two huge football clubs at the end of the day but as a, as a whole with my my life and what i enjoyed like i i sheffield united i i would choose on that side for sure for, for the whole experience of life i would for the for the for the times we had for the trips we had for the people i met even behind the scenes i mean i still speak to some of the like sue and john and things like that i still speak to people behind the scenes and stuff because football football's a part of your life it's not everything and you meet you meet good people along the way that's great to hear how any more questions well i was just thinking nick isn't it amazing how many footballers we speak to who aren't from sheffield originally and they want to settle in sheffield it's just <laughs> it just makes you feel so great about what a wonderful city i think we're going to leave it there but before we go um yeah. thank you very much for being here we've you're just welcome. started this new thing um you're going to be the second kind of guinea pig we're going to give you as a thank you for coming on our uh, podcast this john brayford <laughs> mug i'm guessing you know yeah, where that that photo comes from yeah I, I do know yeah i know that is a the charlton athletic game for sure i'll let you know on a secret that's actually not a photo that is a uh, very good drawing <laughs> it is a very good drawing by uh by cheryl uh and uh we'll yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll uh we'll set we'll get it sent through to you i'll um i appreciate i appreciate that i really do yeah no worries at all mate no worries at all look at look so, at the hair john i uh, know that but that's that's we've gone from picky blinders to the vikings in the space yeah. of five years haven't we we really have <laughs> i think i think that's lovely I, I mean i would love one like nick if you can ask gonna make me one that's brilliant i'm not yeah, sure the air would grow, I'm, I'm not sure the air would grow back like that these days though no it's gonna happen to all of us mate don't worry about it i think that's uh i think the, the look that you're rocking at the moment definitely the vikings look it works yeah. Uh, well that's brilliant thanks for being here john we really appreciate uh, it like we've said all all the way through this you you're a big big part of kind of like the chef united rebirth if you like us, us absolutely loving our club again um mm -hmm. because it, it it was gone for for a little bit but you brought it back you and the boys and uh we're, we're very very happy to have had you on today no worries